Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Musings by Nikki. I'm Nikki. Just in case you didn't get that part. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my gosh, coughs already. <clears throat> but I'm not going to edit it out or restart because you know what? I'll probably do it again. Anyway, it's back for October's Five on a Dime Challenge. A challenge that was created by Gina at the Firefly Studio 67 who is a wonderful crafter. She and Martina from Tinkiela and Angela from Angela Kerr and I all do this every month around the 15th. We come up with the list, we take turns. So this time it was my turn to make up the list of the five items, five, that we're going to use. This time I chose a bag, like paper bag or whatever, some sort of bag, um, ribbon, bead, you could use a bead or you could use multiple beads, which we're going to do, see? Um, cardstock and a coffee filter or tea bag. So, um, you know, because I know y'all Brits over there really like your tea. <laughs> I'm a huge coffee drinker. Um, so, these are our things that we are going to use today. So, I've got my stuff out. This is what we're going to make right here. Um, so I'll talk you through that in just a second. I've got my cardstock back here. I just pulled, these are some scrappy pieces out of my kind of like larger offcut scrap bin. Um, this is a larger piece of 12 by 12 printed cardstock. This is my paper bag. Whoops, the beads are going AWOL. Oh my gosh. Why did I, <laughs> why did I think I could just lay them there and it would be fine? Oh, there's my beads. And here's my ribbon. Here, this is kind of was the first thing I came up with and I'll talk you through that. Um, I'm gonna put these guys like over here. You know what, I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna put them in one of the, uh, you guys. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna put them right over here and they're gonna just chill in that little niche. Okay. So here's the stuff, but first let me show you through the project that we're going to make. Um, so this is going to go on, I'm currently working on a journal, so let me just pull one of the signatures out. It's going to go on the front of one of the signatures, in between the signatures in my journals, but in most people's books. There's usually a little bit of extra like space, a little playroom, and so that's where I try to put, if I have a little bit more chunky elements, that's where I try to put them. So this is going to go on the front of um, one of the pages of the signature, or on the back. Nope, just kidding. On the front, not or for sure because of the tabs and the hangover. Yep, I did that on purpose. So, um, anywho, this is... The bag folded in half to create a pocket here and a pocket back here and then pocket on the side of the bag here and then a pocket as the bag attaches to the cardstock right here. And then I've got a coffee filter ruffle right here, whoops, that I just bent. Um, some ribbon that we are going to turn from this bright yellow into a darker kind of uh, aged yellow. And then I've got my beads here and a little clothespin there. Or not, that's not a clothespin, that's a safety pin. Um, so my beads on the end of these strings and then some um, collaging stuff. And then I've got cardstock that I've used is to like make pocket tags, excuse me. And then the whole thing opens up like this. And I've made another coffee filter ruffle here. And this is just a little... Wendy tag right here, little round Wendy tag, and then I just put a couple of pieces of paper in here for journaling, and then the back has a pocket, and that'll be, you know, affixed, and then there's a couple little um, file folders in there. So, then that all closes, and the weight of the, all the stuff on the front just kind of keeps it closed. So that's what we're going to make. This is my five on a dime project for the month. So let's get to making. Um, 
I grabbed out several coffee filters. I don't know why, I just did. I'm gonna throw them over there because I think the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make fold this pocket, uh, this bag into a pocket. These are these long um, envelopes. These are not envelopes, you guys. <sighs> These are long bags. Sorry, you guys, it has been a few days and I'll probably tell you about it in a minute. But anyway, I am a little bit, not frazzled or flustered, but just a little bit like, you know, I've been out of sorts. Anyway, let's just take a sip of the crafter fuel. <sighs> All right, so these are these long bags. I'm pretty sure I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're awesome. Um, at first I was like, oh, those will work really good on a page. Yeah, because sometimes when I'm in the store, it's a little long, doesn't quite fit. But you know, in my head I was like, oh, that'll be perfect. It'll be a nice long bag. But I found lots of other uses for them, including what we're about to do right now. <clears throat> so this is the top edge, right? Which kind of looks funny because it looks like that's the edge from the weird coffee staining. But here's the opening. And so what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to slice off the end of right the bottom side. I'm just going to literally cut the slightest little piece I can off of there, like so. Then I am also going to, oh, hold on, oh my gosh, sorry. The one thing I forgot about this one is, so when I fold it up, I'm going to fold it up. Let's see, what am I going to do? I'm going to fold it up like this. So then this will be an opening and stuff. But this side pocket here, as you put something in, it kept, it wants to catch on this little flap. So what I'm going to do is put a, just a piece of cello tape um, because it sticks better than washi and you won't see this at all, right? It's okay. I just want to go down a little bit. But that way, as you try to insert your side, it helps it just slide over it rather than get stuck on it. You know, I'm going to go all the way along the edge there. I hope this makes sense because it really does, it, it's going to help. The first one, I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? And then I was going to try and like tape inside of it while it was already sewn up and stuff. And that would have been a mess. So I am flipping it over with the cover or with the opening down here and then flipping it back. Because remember, I cut the other end open as well. So I'm cut, I'm flipping it back, folding it back on itself. Come on. And I think I want to go a little bit lower. Yeah, like there. Because I've already cut the paper so that I wasn't trying to like mess around too much. Okay, so now I've got an opening here. And then this part's gonna get sewn down or glued down and then I've got an opening here and then it'll also create an opening here. So, and I've got the tape in there so things glide over, which is fantastic. Now I'm going to put a little thumb notch in the top part back here. So, I'm going to Choose about middle-ish, about middle-ish, eyeball it. There we go. So now I've got my little thumb hole as well. Now we ink. And, you know, everything gets inked. I'm using Vintage Photo. This is going to go, did I say this already? This is going to go into, um, the design team project that I'm working on right now for Tracy Fox. I am so excited about this one. I just put some um, Christmas kits, Christmas stuff in my 
Etsy shop. And even though my girls have been <laughs> listening to Christmas music for weeks now, um, I still just am not feeling Christmas. I was just listening to Gail, who's just started making some fall journals, or was make, working on some fall journals. And I was like, yep, I agree. I'm not feeling Christmas yet. Okay, so I've got it inked up. I've inked around the thumb hole, so now you can kind of better see where my pockets are going to be. Now, I'm going to sew, and I want this uniform sewn look all the way around, okay? But I want to leave this end open for a pocket. So, see how it catches right there? Then I have to, like, shove it. So we're going to avoid that. <laughs> um, so what I did is I open it up and I sew this edge and then just just that edge. Then I fold it up and sew this edge and this edge. So then it looks like it's been sewn all the way around, but it leaves this side free so that we can create that pocket. So I'm going to do that really quick. Actually, I'm going to do that. Let's see. Is there anything else that I need to... So while I'm over there, yes. Okay, let's do this. This is what we're gonna do so I don't have to like keep stopping the video. <laughs> this is this background piece. So this is a 12 by 12 piece of um, cardstock, just like printed cardstock that I have. And I've inked around the edge. So like, and I pen, you know, I corner punched this side. So if we can imagine, that goes there. And then this side is going to fold up to create this little tuck spot. So we can do that right now. Okay, so then while I go to sew this bag, this, this bag does not get sewn onto this piece, even though it kind of looks like it, but you can see sewing around the back of the green piece because this creates a larger pocket when we glue it on as well. So I'm going to sew around this, right? I just started here, went down, around, and back. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go sew these two pieces, and I will be right back. Okay. So you know how, um, how when I make a mistake, we just leave it in because it's a learning opportunity? <laughs> so here we go. This is what I did. I forgot to glue this down first. So what I did with this one was... Once I folded it in half, or once I sewed this side, then I glued this flap down to create the side pocket, and then I sewed around, but I forgot to do that. But it's okay. It can be remedied. Oops. So what I'm going to do is I just want to glue the back of the flap that kind of goes over the top edge of the bag. Um, so I can open it up like this and do it like this and it will work no problemo. This is the kind of stuff I do when I am filming because, you know, as I've said before, the minute I turn on the camera, my brain goes out the door. Okay, so we're gonna glue that down. It's already sewn on that edge and now it has become a flap which has then created this side pocket right here. Okay? Okay. Now we're going to cap this because we want to keep it happy. Then I've also created the kind of, um, you know, wallety thing that it's going to go on the front of like this. I'm going to fold that and I want it to just stick out slightly past the edge of this and go right to the fold. So we'll line that up and make a fold. There we go. So now we have our envelope that we can, well, our pocket that we made out of the bag and we have our, um, I don't know, what do you call this thing? It's like a flip, little flip out notebooky type of thing. <laughs> um, so now 
I have some little auxiliary pieces over here. This is some coffee stained paper that I just made the notebook out of. And, oh, I forgot I should have run this through the machine. I can do that really quick. So I'm just going to run a stitch down because my stapler cannot fit all the way to here to staple it. So I'm going to really quickly here run this through the machine. Okay, guys. Sorry, my machine's just right over here. Okay. There we go. So now I've sewn my papers in. Well, that's this way. <laughs> so now my papers are sewn in. I just adjust. I do like just a straight stitch, but I adjust it wide because if you put too many holes through the middle, then it has a tendency to want to like rip out. Um, rather than just stayed sewn in. So I just make it a nice long stitch and that way it, it doesn't poke as many holes and doesn't want to rip out. Okay, so next we're going to make the, the coffee filter things, ruffles. So these are just regular old, um, you can kind of see the, I haven't done anything to them, I haven't ironed them or anything, I just simply went like this. When I have um, the bottom, you know, when I buy coffee filters, they come in like this little stack and there's three kind of inside of each other and each one has like 50 in it or something. And the bottom ones tend to just kind of get smooshed out after a while of using them. So I just nab those out and do this to them and use them in journals. I have always wanted to make kind of a ruffly looked thing just because I think the edges of them kind of lend themselves to that. They remind me of that. And so here we go. I'm doing it. The book that I'm making is kind of a, I don't know, I was just going to say Victorian, but it's not really Victorian. It's just kind of, it's Tracy's Taddy Daydreams kit. So if you're familiar with it, it kind of just has this um, grungy, girly seamstress feel. I don't know. It's a beautiful kit. So what I did is fold it in half and that's just so I can see where I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it down that fold. I am not going to be super worried about getting it exactly in half or I mean, you know, cutting straight along the line. And now we have two halves and this will make our two ruffles. This one, as you can see, has a straight edge and this one is kind of pleated with like um, a stair step look. So here's how I did this. I folded this in half again just so I could get this center point here because I'm going to use that to kind of pleat from that, if that makes sense. So this is similar to the way that I used to pleat fabric for when I was making dresses. So this one is going to be the inside one. So I'm literally just kind of holding my finger here and then folding back and forth along from this and then trying to make, you know, it's like folding a fan when you were little and you'd fold little paper fans to pretend you were fancy. Or now when you're an adult, you do it because you're literally having hot flashes and so <laughs> you need to fold yourself a paper fan out of whatever you can find like that. So this goes like just back and forth and I'm just kind of trying to keep that, you know, again, not an exact science. So if you deviate from the little corner a little bit, you're going to be fine because we're going to whack that off anyway. It just kind of helps keep this a little bit straighter up here. Okay, so we have our fan and then what I did was Ooh, that one's kind of pretty the way that that feathers like that too. These are fun, you guys. Just play with it. It makes a lot of fun stuff. So then what I kind of did to make it go like this was I just held down the first one, pulled it back a bit, and creased it, pulled it back just a bit, and creased it, 
you can go like as wide of you know pleats and kind of baffles as you want here. So some of these you're kind of recreasing the back side of it. And then you just push it down. So now we've made this, this one here. You can fan yourself and it's not gonna move any air. Um, so we've made that one. And then we're gonna cut the end off because we don't need that and it's gonna go around the edge. It's less bulk for under there. Then let's make this one. Now that one kind of happened by accident. So we're gonna see if I can recreate it. Not by accident, just dumb luck probably is a better word. So I started with trying to stay at the midpoint, but then to see you guys, okay. I want to come down a little bit like this, or did I go up? I went up. So each time I moved this over just slightly. That's I think what I did. Well, now I'm pretending like I, I'm like, oh yeah, of course that's what I did. I have no idea if that's what I did. Nope, already that full. Oh, here's the nice thing also about this. Coffee filters are like really super forgiving. So you can keep folding and refolding over and over again. And um, no, I came in. Let's see. Oh my gosh, you guys are probably sitting at home going, really, we're watching this right now? Okay. Oh, I didn't flip it over and back. That's what I did, you guys. Now I remember. So I just went like this. Then I kind of held my finger down here a little bit and pleated like that. And then we're going to keep going. And every time this peak gets moved over slightly. That part I remembered. Okay. Yeah. Now it's working, you guys. And again, that corner, whoops, see, I almost went the wrong way again. I almost, I almost went off stray, off, off, off uh, task here. Okay. Again, we're gonna cut that um, corner off though. So that's not gonna matter so much. There we go. And we've got our little kind of like, you know, rounded edge ruffle pleat thing. <laughs> um, so this is what this side looks like, like what I put here. But then this side looks like this, and I kind of like that side too. So maybe we'll use this side up this time. Who knows? Um, but I don't like the raw edge. So whatever way I do it, I'll fold that raw edge under. Okay, so now we're going to put those on the front here. And then I, um, this is just from, this little label is from my um, digital kit. It's uh, cabinet cards, vintage cabinet cards. So I've got another one of my vintage cabinet cards labels that we're going to put right here. And we're going to put this, I think I'm going to leave this side up. So I'm going to fold the raw edge under like that. And then I'm going to cut the end off. Oops, I don't need that whole thing right now. Yeah, I like that look. What do you guys think? Like that? So you can see this one is done the other way, but this one won't go this way. So now gluing on with all of the fanniness going on here, this is kind of how I did it. Cause I was like, what am I going to do? First, I'm going to tuck that raw edge. So um, I, this is another reason why I love this like fine point tip on this. So I kind of just put it in between each layer and put a little tiny, you know, skim of, skint of glue. And then we're going to press it down. And then we'll do kind of the same thing on the front. Some of it will go right through because coffee filters you know, are meant to have fluid go through them. Whoops, went a little too far with that one. 
Uh, also, I thought, you know, I could copy or I could try to um, ink the edges of this, but oh my gosh, I can't imagine trying to like hold coffee filter and ink the edges. So if you guys want to do that, you go right ahead. I think I would have just been frustrated. So I chose not to. All right. So there goes that. And then this guy's going to go down, but I'm going to put cheesecloth, which I buried my cheesecloth. Let's cap this back up. I cannot believe I have not lost my pin. I have been using that bottle for a while and I have not lost the pin for it, you guys. You know what I have lost though? All, all my fuzzy socks. One of the things uh, with, fib with my fibromyalgia, winters are hard. That's part of what's been happening for me the last few days is that like winter has somehow arrived in Minnesota ahead of fall, you know, because that's how we roll here. We just do it all at the same time. And um, with that has come just like, you know, crazy barometric pressure changes as storm systems have rolled in and out and in and out over the last um, several weeks. So some of the things that I usually do to kind of help my body stay warmer um, warm meaning like, you know, when athletes have to warm up their muscles, that's what I mean. Like keep my muscles warm, keep my body warm and going. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put, you know, a little extra glue on the back of this. So it goes through the cheesecloth and glues it down to the paper. Anyway, I wear stocking caps, like little beanies a lot. Um, and then fuzzy socks. And I have like a pair of clogs that are lined with fleece that are really warm. And I wear sweaters a lot. Um, so my fuzzy socks are like a big deal to me, you guys. But I can't find them. I can find one, because you know, dryers, drying, drying, they eats your socks. So I can find one of each pair. So like right now I'm wearing a mismatched pair but I need some more fuzzy socks. There we go. Because, like I said, winter has arrived with fall. We kind of bounce back and forth here in Minnesota for a while. <laughs> this time of year, we go fall, winter, fall, winter, fall, winter. So um, Saturday was my birthday and October 12th, it usually doesn't snow in Minnesota that early. But it snowed on the morning of my birthday, so I went out to the car and wrote happy birthday on my window in snow as I was leaving to go run an errand. And I was like, that usually doesn't happen on my birthday, that I can write something in snow on my window. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to age up some ribbon. So if you are like me, <clears throat> you have tons of um, this super cheap ribbon that you get, like, you can get it everywhere, Michael's, and you can get it at Walmart and dollar store, and it's like, you know, a buck for the, the roll of, I don't know how long this is, six yards. And, like, they're even cheaper than a buck. They're, like, nine, 89 cents or something. Anyway, you can get it, but you can't get it in nice vintage -y tones that's <laughs> all, like, this bright stuff. And I had some of this from making my um, taggities. I had this bright colored ribbon, but now I don't want bright colored ribbon because this definitely doesn't, you know, like yellow, that's too much for that. But I like this color here. So here is the simple way that I do this. Zoop. <laughs> and I've seen Artie Mays, Andrea at Artie Mays, she'll like write on her, she has a glass craft mat. I would really love to have a glass craft mat for like this reason. She'll go like this and, you know, blob some of it around on there and then put some water and ink it up and stuff. But also when I've done that, my hands get super inky and I don't want them super inky today. So I find if I'm just doing, whoop, there we go. If I'm just doing a piece of ribbon or something small, this way works too. And there we go. Now to just kind of make sure that it's not like extra inky, I take um, this old 
library card and I just do the same thing but I do it on paper so it's not adding more ink to it it's just kind of smooshing in the ink that I just put on and you know taking any off if it's too much so now we've taken the bright yellow ribbon and antiqued it and I like that it's um, you know darker in some spots and lighter see like that because it just kind of makes it look grungier and I'm a grungy kind of girl so now we want to make this little bow down here so we're gonna make the bow and then we're going to tie tie it with uh, some wax to linen that I use for binding usually and then we're gonna put the beads on that and then I threw on a little um, safety pin just because that's part of the tattiness of this so I'm gonna pull off more than I think I need right now because my fingers and my hands like I was just saying with the changes in the weather nothing cooperates the way it should so so here's how I make the bow this is probably like not news to you guys <laughs> <laughs> just fold it over like this so like that right then I'm gonna tie instead of tying the bow what I'm gonna do is use this piece of so I'm tying just a loose starter you know knot in it and then I'm gonna go make my bow again and I don't want the bow too big so I'll go that size. Then I'm going to slide this over the middle and with my fingers that don't usually want to cooperate. Ugh. There we go. I hope this makes sense to you what I am doing. It probably does because you are smart people. But now this is what I've done. Tied this in a bow or tied tied this in a knot around that. So I'm going to tie a second little piece of the knot, but first I want to adjust that out a little. Because again, I don't want that to be huge. Okay. And it'll kind of like rough fluff up a little bit as you do this. And that's fine. You can adjust it around afterwards too. Okay. So now I have my little bow. Here we go and my two extremely long tails and like I said again because my hands don't always cooperate so now I'm going to put a little cut on these and this is going to go right here and I'm going to put this on before I tie the um, beads on actually I'm going to put went too soon I'm going to Fabri-Tac it on because it's going to stick better with Fabri-Tac. Because, you know, Fabri-Tac is for the fabric. And all the paper that we glue with it all the time. <laughs> okay. There we go. I'm just going to hold it down for a sec. So see, we're making the little bow, and I'm making little strings of fabric tack all over my fingers. Okay, I'm going to let that set for just a second, and I'm going to pull my little box of, what did I do with it? Right here. I've got a little box of all kinds of little mini ephemera from Tracy's, like, I forget what it's called, tiny ephemera, I think these little tiny things they're super cute so I had put a little two pence label there but this one's a little bigger I kind of like that I kind of like that that was not hard to make that decision let's just ink the edges up okay fingers don't fail me now this is just wants to creep up a little bit so I'm going to stick a little extra glue right under there as I do this 
And then I'm going to glue this little guy down. Like so. These tiny ephemera things from Tracy, I hope I want to get that extra down here, um, work so good for doing little collaging bits like this. Like if you get to, so when I did this one, I got to the point right before I put this on and went, you know, it just needs something extra. Um, so then this, this tiny ephemera stuff works so well for that. It, it's like that little bit of extra that you just need right there and it just adds it and then it's good. So there we go. We added this little tiny Victorian calling card from Tracy's tiny ephemera. All right, now we're going to put our beads on. So <clears throat> here is a trick that I have found to when I'm trying to get it onto the seam binding because that's usually like what I do at the bottom of my journals is I give it a, um, a cut like this and it almost forms there's no way I'm going to be able to show you because my camera probably won't focus in that, that tight but it forms a little point so it's like easier to thread stuff on so I've got this cute little heart let's see I want it to go this way let's see if we can get it through Ooh, first try. Cute little heart and then the silver bead. Let's do that. Now you could leave these long if you want and have them hang out the bottom of the journal. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have mine hang about here-ish. So I'll go like this. And then this is my other trick for placing a oh, kimono. For placing my knot in the right spot, I put a pin or my awl through it, and then I can adjust it up or down. Now it really only works with waxed linen or embroidery floss. And I think, I think I'm gonna need a double knot there. Because that bottom bead is just big enough. So here, like when I have a hard time with my fingers or you know, don't do fiddly work very well but that needle in there helps me place that knot right over the other knot, whereas before I'd be just a mess trying to make them fit over each other. And then I'm gonna leave a little tail. So there's that, and then let's do this one. I'm gonna give myself that little snip again. And let's go green. And then this guy is kinda like a copper color and then green again. Cue it. Okay. How far do I want those? A little bit lower than the other one. And that one I know will only take one knot because I use those little green beads a lot. Okay. So there we go, guys. Look at that cute little heart bead. And then I've just got some other beads down there and I left a long tail because I just like the little dangly. So there's those. Then I'm gonna try and get this safety pin through here. These safety pins, I love them. They're the little tiny um, Tim Holtz ones and I had ordered some because I hadn't been able to find them like anywhere, which seemed odd to me. Um, but I hadn't, our Hobby Lobby didn't have them and Joanne didn't have them. So I ordered some on um, Amazon. And then of course, as soon as I ordered them on Amazon, uh, I found them in Hobby Lobby and I bought them again. So I have lots of them. So we're using them up. There we go. So that's through. So we've decorated the front of our pocket. And now it's gonna go on here. Now, when I put it on, I want to leave, so I've got my small pocket here, right? And then I want to make a bigger pocket here. So I'm gonna glue around these three edges so it leaves this end open. As usual, I put my thumb on the side. I don't want to glue because otherwise, inevitably, I will glue it shut and then I just won't have the cool thing that I thought I was going to have. 
So, there we go. And we're gonna, I'm gonna open this up so I don't get glue on the pocket by mistake. There we go. Glue along the edge and glue along the edge. And I managed to keep both of the pockets open. Whoops. I obviously need some more glue along there, huh? Oh, I forgot there was stitching. I didn't put enough glue. There we go. Let me hold that down for a sec. I probably should have used Fabri-Tac because it'll hold to the stitching better, but oh well. Look what Fabri-Tac's doing to my nail polish. Can't have nice things when you use Fabri-Tac. It eats away at everything. I finally had to turn my mat over to this side because Fabri-Tac had gotten on. This is another reason I want glass mats. You guys, glass mats, right? They Do you guys use them? What do you think? Give me a Give me an honest review in the comments below because if Fabri-Tac gets on it you can just wipe that off right or peel it off can't you here it like eats away at the printing on my craft mat so like my markings and stuff right in this area where I craft a lot um, we're starting to get smudged away because it's got acetone in it so it eats away at the at the printing at the the you know ink or whatever's on there all right so there we go, guys. Pockets, 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 pockets here, big pocket up here, all the pocket space. Now let's open it up and let's put our little embellishment on the inside here, like that. So another little ruffly guy and another little Wendy tag and we need a little bit more of the cheesecloth because you know, everything's better with ink and cheesecloth. So now we're going to do the same um, little glue maneuver here. Just kind of zhuzh some glue around inside the folds. There we go. And up there. And then I'm going to just go under each one a little bit there and I kind of leave the edge unglued I, I go down here like this but I leave the edge um, because I like kind of a little bit of a ruffle to come off of there okay and then Spread our cheesecloth out. Oh, I can hear the girls downstairs. They must be done with class. They're goofing around. This is one of the beauties of online school is they really do have, as long as they get their work done, they, they kind of have some free time during the afternoons to do other things, which is nice because my oldest is in the fall play right now and uh, because they still participate in all the extracurriculars at school at our local school so she's in the fall play so it gives her time to memorize her lines and stuff like that and then get to play practice on time and the youngest is in volleyball well she's just filling fin finishing up her volleyball season and now she just she just auditioned on Saturday morning that's where I was going when I wrote my little message to myself on my window in the snow I was bringing her to school for dance line auditions so now she's auditioning for dance line and so she'll find out today if she made it on the line um, so there we go guys we've got a little embellishment on the inside cue it and we've got all our embellishments done on the outside and the only thing that's left is to just make some tags to go in here so that's why I've got all my other scraps of cardstock 
So let's make sure I've, I've made everything, used everything on the list. I have a bag, ribbon, ribbon, beads, cardstock, and we're gonna use some more of it, um, and coffee filters. Yep, I did it. Ding, ding, ding. So these are a bunch of off cuts from um, different, you know, things. This is like, I don't remember, Anna Griffin. I got this a long time ago. It's this really cool, like, wallpapery kind of looking papers, but um, it has printing on the back, so you can't just cut it into a tag because you have to cover that up. But in when we're doing smaller kind of things like this, it works good because, um, is that a little bit open right there? Yeah. It works good because you can cut that part off. There we go. Just gonna hold that down because you know the edges are where it gets wear and tear. So if those aren't affixed down, then you're gonna end up pulling it up by you know pushing things in and out. So I like I like this. It's kind of got this embossed grayish stuff on there. So that'll probably go in there as a taller tag. And then I've got the shorter. We're gonna cut that down like there-ish. Oh wait though, I want the writing on that side. So we're gonna whack off. Maybe a little bit more. Cause I like to see the little thumb notch for some reason. Yeah, like that. So then let's put little corners on this to make it a tag. You guys still with me? I'm going to ink this up. And then the rest of the tags, I am not going to make you watch me cut down because if you are watching this, there is a really strong chance that you know how to make a tag. Just saying. Um, because, you know, you're a journal maker like me probably, right? Or an artist. So that's going to go in there. I'm going to cut this one down just a little bit on the bottom and make it into a tag like this. And then I'll probably put the rest of my ribbon like this. I'm going to use the rest of my stained ribbon to um, make a bow of some sorts up there just so I, you know, I get all the ribbon use in. <laughs> and there we go, guys. Um, I'll find something to put in here or make a little tag to put in there. Sometimes I can use these little off cuts like this to make mini tags to go in there, right? So there we go, guys. That is my file on a dime. Um, look forward to throwing these into the journals that I am making right now. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Oh, my fingers did get a little inky though. That'll come off though. <laughs> they look orange. I've got Fabri-Tac nails and inky, inky fingers from holding the ribbon. You can tell it's been a good day of crafting if you've got ink somewhere and your nail polish is coming off because you've Fabri-Tac'd some stuff. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great afternoon. If you're crafting today. I hope you really enjoy your crafting. If the weather is turning where you are, I hope you're enjoying the turn of the weather. It just reminds me that, you know, there are seasons in life and there are always seasons um, and things always change and things always move forward. And so we got to change and move forward with them, right? Anyway, there's my little waxing sentimental and philosophic today. <laughs> I hope you guys are all doing really well and um, I will see you again uh, maybe making some ephemera for my design team project that I'm working on. And until then, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whatever time it is, on whatever side of this wonderful planet that you live on. And I will see you guys all again very soon. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.